John 20, verses 11 to 23. Um, if you're using the church Bible, it is on 1685. Now Mary stood aside, sorry, Mary stood outside the tomb crying. As she wept, she bent over to look into the tomb and saw two angels in white, seated where Jesus' body had been, one at the head and the other at the foot. They asked her, Woman, why are you crying? They have taken my Lord away, she said, and I don't know where they have put him. At this, she turned round and saw Jesus standing there, but she did not realize that it was Jesus. He asked her, Woman, why are you crying? Who is it you are looking for? Thinking he was the gardener, she said, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have put him and I will get him. Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned towards him and cried out in Aramaic, Rabboni, which means teacher. Jesus said, Do not hold on to me, for I have not yet ascended to the Father. Go instead to my brothers and tell them, I am ascending to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene went to the disciples with the news, I have seen the Lord, and she told them that he had said these things to her. On the evening of that first day of the week, when the disciples were together with the doors locked for fear of the Jewish leaders, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he, after he said this, he showed them his hands and side. The disciples were overjoyed when, he saw, when they saw the Lord. Again, Jesus said, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, I am sending you. And with that, he breathed on them and said, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive anyone's sins, their sins are forgiven. If you do not forgive them, they are not forgiven. This is the Gospel of Christ. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we just thank you for, again, uh, the reminder of the resurrection story and, and what happened in the um, time 2,000 plus years ago uh, with your disciples meeting with you and encountering you in, in a new and, and, and different way. And I pray this morning as we look at the, this encounter that the disciples had, that we too may have an encounter with you this morning. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I'm going to speak about uh, the resurrection of Jesus and, and what that means to us. What does the risen Christ uh, and knowing him actually means to each one of us? And I want to look at the second part of the gospel. So in the first part of the gospel, we see Mary Magdalene uh, meeting Jesus. She first thought he was a gardener and when Jesus called her name, she recognized him for who he is. But later on, that, that same day, the day of the resurrection, in, in the evening, uh, he then appeared to his disciples. And, and we're going to look uh, and spend a little bit of time uh, in that encounter that disciples had with Jesus in, in verses 19 to 23. And as we think of that encounter, uh, what, what I want us to think about is uh, how the risen Jesus acted in front of his disciples and, and what did the risen Jesus say to his disciples? Uh, because what he did and what he said is actually quite critical uh, uh, for us as we journey as followers of Christ. And in looking at this encounter Jesus had with this gathering of disciples, uh, we can find three truths uh, that is so important for us to take hold of. And the first truth is this. The risen Christ is always present with us, and that's a promised action. And so we read in verse 19, on the evening of that first day of the week, when the disciples were together with the doors locked for fear of the Jewish leaders, Jesus came and stood among them. Now, there are three things that I want to highlight from this verse. Uh, firstly, we, we, we see that the doors were locked. So, how did Jesus come into the room? He, he didn't come through the, the, the doors, he didn't come through the wall, uh, he just appeared. Okay, and I'm not sure if you have ever tried going through the wall. Um, I tried when I was a kid and it doesn't work. And, and so, Jesus, how, how did he get into that room when the doors were locked? 
uh, we need to realize um, um, that in, in the following verse, in verse 20, um, we read, after he said this to the disciples, he showed them his hands and his side. And, and so they, they touched it, they found it was flesh and blood and bones. Uh, Luke 24 explains it a little bit more in Luke 24 verse 39. Jesus says, look at my hands and my feet. It is I myself, touch me and see. A ghost does not have flesh and, blow, and, and bones, as you see I have. And so Jesus uh, was the same with flesh and, and bones and blood and all that. And yet he was different because he entered a, 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 a locked room. You know, uh, and so I, I think that's quite fascinating that Jesus with flesh and blood was able to do that. The second thing that I want to, to look at is that the disciples were afraid. And that's understandable. Uh, if your leader has been arrested and, and crucified on the cross, uh, you as his followers would be a bit nervous, wouldn't you? You'll be worried, you'll be concerned, you'll be anxious about uh, what's going to happen to you. You know, I mean, I would be afraid, I would be frightened when that, that, that I was in that situation. And, and so um, Jesus was there uh, in the midst of the, the fear that the disciples had. And there was a third thing, Jesus came and stood among them. So Jesus didn't stand on the fringe or in the margins, he came and stood in the midst of them. And so it got me thinking, those three things about Jesus, that, that there was something different about the risen Christ, that even though he had flesh and blood and bones, the, the thing that was different was that Jesus, the risen Christ, was no longer limited to space and time. What does that mean to us? It means that Jesus can be in our situation that we go through, in every situation that we go through, any fear or anxiety or worries or concerns, the risen Christ can be with us. He can be close to us. He can, he can stand beside us. And that, that's the promise Jesus makes, that, that because I'm now resurrected, I'm risen, I, I am no longer in, 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 uh, bound by time and space. I can be with you anywhere, anytime, any place. And he can also go to the deepest uh, recesses of our hearts with all the pain and brokenness that we go through. That cannot hold Jesus back. The risen Christ can be with you wherever you are, whatever you're going through, through the deepest pain and struggles that you have. And what happened when the disciples encountered the presence of the risen Christ. We, we see in John 20 and verse 20, when they began to notice that this was Jesus, they were overjoyed when they saw the Lord. And so from being afraid, being anxious, being worried, being concerned, being nervous, being frightened, when they knew that Jesus was with them, they were filled with joy. They were filled with, with an over, they were overwhelmed with joy knowing that they are not alone, that Christ's presence is with them, a promised action, that, they, that he would never leave them nor forsake them. And that was the last words Jesus said to the disciples before he ascended into heaven in the Great Commission, because I am now the risen Christ, I can be with you always to the very end of the age. In other words, Jesus Christ is here with us now. The risen Christ can never be held back from re reaching out to you and helping you in your points of need. That He is, uh, the promise He makes is that He's always going to be there because He's no longer constrained by time and space. So that's the first truth we need to realize, that Christ is always present with us. The second point is this, the risen Christ brings peace into our lives, and I call it a promise statement. So what did, what did Jesus say? Twice he says uh, in, in, in the passage that we read in John 20 and verse 19, uh, he says this, uh, peace be with you. And then again in 21, again Jesus said, peace be with you. What Jesus wanted to establish in the lives of people who encountered Christ is to, to give you his peace. That in the midst of anxiety, when we know God is with us and we are know that He's never going to let us down, he, he, Christ wants us to know that, that we can have this peace that He wants to give us. Two kinds of peace. Firstly, peace with God. 
that Christ wants us to know that because he is risen from the dead, he has now been able to open the bridge to allow us to, to have a restored or a reconciled relationship with God. In Romans 5 and verse 1 and 2, it says this, Therefore, since we have been justified through faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have gained access by faith into this grace in which we now stand, and we boast in the hope of the glory of God. So, firstly, God promises His, or Christ promises His presence with us, and he wants you to know that in the midst of the fear and anxiety and worries and concerns that you have, he being next to you can fill you with joy. But Christ doesn't want to leave you at, in that place. He wants to bring you into a place where you can have peace with God, that you can have a restored relationship with him. No matter how far you drift away from God, because Christ is now the risen Christ, he can be the bridge to draw you back to him again. Often when I share the gospel, and I shared it here when we did um, the, the, the series on, on uh, reaching out to our friends and family, the, the Romans 6.23 bridge, because I shared that with Billy, I shared that with Hera yesterday, I shared it with, with different people. And, and, and the bridge is this, on one side we have the wages of sin is death, and on the other side we have the gift of God is eternal life. And often people are wanting to move from death to life. They're wanting to move from a life of, of struggles, anxiety, pains, and concerns to come and find life and to find full and meaningful life. But the problem is this, that there is this big chasm, that the only way that we can bridge that chasm is through Jesus Christ. And many people try to bridge that chasm with alcohol, with drugs, with uh, career, with materialism, with, with whatever. We, we try to find life, and, and you and I know that all these things don't actually give a lasting fulfillment, a lasting satisfaction. The only thing that can give us that life is to, 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 to leave this, this, this destructive life and cross over to the life that God promises. Peace with Him, joy, and, 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 and righteousness, and, and, and find purpose and meaning again. And the only way to cross over is through Jesus Christ. And that is what Jesus Christ did. He gave us peace with God. He reconciled us back to God. And so it's not enough just crying out to God and wanting Him in your life. You need to be restored back to God again and, and be reconciled with Him. But it's not just peace with God that, that Christ is offering. He's also offering peace, the peace of God, the fruit of the Spirit. That in the midst of turmoil, difficulties and worries and anxieties, we can have the peace of God within us. That no matter what happens in life, to know deep down, God is in control. And so that's what the risen Christ does. He brings peace into our life. And, and it's a promise statement he makes. Peace I give you. Again in John chapter 14, peace I leave with you. Not the, like the peace the world gives. I give you a different peace. The world's peace does not last. But the peace that God gives last forever. And then finally, the risen Christ stands out, uh, sends us out in His power, a promised purpose. Now, it's important that we get the order right. Notice the order that it comes. Jesus, first of all, reveals His presence. He then gives us peace, and then He sends us out to fulfill a purpose. It doesn't work in any other order. It is that order that we need to follow. Over the years, I, I have encountered different people who have gone through different lives, uh, different lives, different situations and circumstances in their lives. Problems and, and difficulties and challenges. I've talking with, to, spoken to people with, with broken marriages or, or kids going astray or their life is in danger or, or all sorts of dilemmas and, and they sit in my office full of fear. And as we talk and as we pray, they, they talk to, about the joy or the happiness that they feel. But that's not enough. Knowing the presence of God, that God is there for you, is not enough. And the sad thing is that many people in the church is aware of the presence of God. But have they been restored to the peace with God? 
that only comes when we encounter the gospel and we say, I want to follow Christ. I want to come to the cross and give my life to Jesus. And when we turn to away from the old ways of living, to choose and to embrace the new way of living, it is then that we have peace with God. And unfortunately, a lot of people who are spiritual, who are religious, who are, who are in, in the new age and, and all this stuff, and Hera comes from Motueka, and so we know all about new age in Motueka. <laughs> There's a lot of people that have all sorts of practices and stuff that happens. And, and, and yet, those kind of experiences may, may say, you know, give you a sense of, of the divine. But that does not save you. It needs, you need to come to that place where we know the peace with God. And once we know the peace with God, we can then have the peace of God. And once we have the peace of God, then comes the third step that He then sends out in His power, uh, out, send us out in His power, which is a promised purpose. Jesus says in verse 21 to 22, Again, Jesus said, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, I am sending you. And with that, he breathed on them and said, Receive the Holy Spirit. Notice the two things there. He first reveals his purpose. As the Father has sent me, now that you have known that I am with you always, and now that you know the peace of God and the peace with God, I am now sending you to continue the mission that I came to fulfill. And you are not doing it on your own, he says. Uh, he breathed on them and, and, and said, receive the Holy Spirit. Now this is, a, a, in some ways, a foretaste of what Christ was telling his disciples he, he was going to do. Because we got to realize, Jesus says in, in John, that, 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 that he will go to the Father, and once he gets to, to the Father, he will send the Holy Spirit. And in Acts 1, he tells the disciples, uh, don't do anything, don't go out and fulfill the mission yet until the Holy Spirit comes upon you. And when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, then you'll be my witnesses in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. And we see that happening in Acts 2. And uh, in, uh, on the 23rd of May, Pentecost Sunday, we will talk about the whole uh, baptism of the Holy Spirit. But here the encounter, Jesus was saying, You've got a mission to fulfill now that you know me. Now that you've experienced the peace with God and the peace of God. I want you now to know this, that, that this is not the end. And for many Christians, they think that's the end. Now that I have peace with God, that's it. I can go back and live life the way I want to live. But no, it doesn't stop there. Because there is this order that we got to follow. Not this order, but this order. <laughs> uh, of, 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 of knowing His presence, having His peace, and then the next step is to be involved in, in the mission, involved in His purpose. And we don't do it alone. Uh, it is to be filled with the Holy Spirit. And so the resurrection restores our central purpose for existence. Many people have said to me, you know, I find no meaning and purpose in life, or life is aimless. Why, why, why am I here? Why, why, why am I existing in this life, in this world? And it's because God has a plan and purpose for you. Whether you believe in God or not, you, you are not here by chance. You are here by divine appointment. God has a plan and purpose for you. And one is to know Him, and secondly is to make Him known. That's all our plan and purpose for us. In our careers, wherever we are, wherever God has placed us, in our jobs, in our schools, in our homes, in our neighborhoods, in our communities, we have a plan and a purpose. And our life is significant. None of us is insignificant. None of us is nobody. None of us... Uh, our failures or, 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 or weak or whatever. God has a plan and purpose for you. And the plan and purpose is to, to be sent by Jesus just as Jesus was sent by the Father. And so He sends us out to fulfill His mission. And so here's the challenge. Where are you at in, the, in this order of, of events? Do you know the presence of God in your life. And some of us, even before we have encountered Christ, has known the prompting in our hearts. We know the stirring. 
The Bible tells us that, that even before we know God, God knows us and loves us. And the Bible also tells us it's the Holy Spirit that actually convicts our heart and draws us uh, to, to God, convicts our heart of sin and, and draws us to God. And, and many of us know deep down that, that there is a stirring in our heart that actually we don't know this God fully. That we have been journeying and journeying and journeying and we know about this God. But, but this God, this risen Christ, wants you to know Him. And when you start to realize that He's there with you, then, then there is hope that starts to change. A hope that starts to bubble up from within. That no longer are we afraid. Because we know there is hope. There is, there is a God who cares for you and loves you. And, and, and many times people talk to me about, they, they know God and, and talk about this God, but, but their, their God is quite far away, aloof. And, and, and this God, this risen Christ, is not someone who is far away, but, but someone who is there with you, right there in the midst of, 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 of your situation, of your circumstances. No walls, no doors can keep the risen Christ from, from en engaging with you. And, and many of us know that. We have that stirring in our hearts. And maybe this morning, you want to respond to this presence and to, to let go of those fears, let go of those anxieties, let go of the worries, the things that, that you have been concerned about. Some of us have come from really bad situations and circumstances and and, and many of us are scarred by the situation and circumstances that have kept you trapped. And this morning, the presence of God can set you free, can fill you with joy, can fill you with happiness, can fill you with this, this, this uh, desire to know God more. And, and maybe that's what you need from the risen Christ, to know His presence. But maybe some of you may have been journeying this, this life for a long time and, and you think you know that you, you actually know Christ but you only know about Christ and, and you feel that God is so far away from you you feel that that all the sins all the bad things you have done how can God actually forgive me how can God actually forgive me God actually knows the kind of life I have lived will he ever forgive me how can I ever be reconciled to this God and the good news is no matter how bad you are, no, and no matter how evil you are, no matter all the bad things you have done, this God is able to forgive you and, and, and draw you back to a living relationship with Him. And maybe that's what you need, that peace with God, to give you that sense, I am safe in His arms. I am safe with Him. And, and some of us need to come back and say, Lord, I want to rededicate my life afresh to you, to know your peace, the peace with God and the peace of God in the midst of that circumstances. And, and may, the third thing is that maybe for you this morning is that your life is aimless, your life is meaningless. Your life, you, you wonder, why am I here? What is it that I'm meant to do? And, and God has a plan and purpose for you. That, that you, your life is not one of aimlessness. Your life is not one without meaning or purpose because God is wanting you to be a significant person in His kingdom. And God has a plan and purpose for you. And maybe this morning you may say, Lord, I want to commit my life afresh to that plan and purpose that you have with me. It, it doesn't mean that God is going to send you to Timbuktu the next day. <laughs> God doesn't necessarily mean that He's going to cause, call you to leave the world, leave this country and, and go somewhere else. God may send you back. In fact, most likely, will send you back to your workplace, to your school, to your neighborhoods, to, to wherever you are. But now you go back with a plan and a purpose that you are now someone who is an ambassador of God's kingdom uh, wherever He has placed you. So let's just pause for a few moments and put our, bow our heads in prayer this Easter Sunday. Christ is risen. Christ is risen. We are not following a dead God. 
We are not following a dead saviour. He is risen. And this risen Christ is asking of you today, what is it that you need? Do you need to know His presence? Do you need His peace? Or do you need purpose in life? And if the Spirit of God is speaking to you this morning and prompting you, and you want to respond to one of those three things, can I ask you to raise your hand and put it down again? Yes, thanks, yes. Thanks, just, yep. Okay, let's pray. Heavenly Father, you've seen those people whose hands have raised and, and others who are, who are just struggling with, with your Holy Spirit and, and what you're saying. That maybe it seems too strange that God really would, would do all this for me, that, that I can have this personal relationship with you. And so Holy Spirit, we just invite you to come and move and, and minister and encourage. Help us to know that your presence with us is real, that you never leave us nor forsake us. I pray for peace, Lord, for, for the troubled hearts, to give us the peace. And finally, that Lord, to know per a purpose and plan for our lives. And Lord, I pray for those who have raised their hands this morning. Holy Spirit, I just invite you to come and minister. Minister to each of them right now. Giving them your comfort, your strength, your courage. I pray for a fresh anointing of your Holy Spirit to empower them for the purpose and mission that you're calling them. And for us, Lord, this morning, help us to remember that order, the presence, the peace, and then the purpose. So that, Lord, we can walk with the risen Christ through our journey here on earth. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.